documentaries. Um, I just have one question, yeah. real quick, before I say. I have a dear friend of mine. She's a former student worker. Her name is Stephanie Sisko. When you spoke Chinese, man, I'm guessing you're Mandarin. Yeah. She almost died. Yeah. She's from Taiwan. Oh. <laughs> she, she's the still only oh. 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 yeah. really, literally, 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 nigger crap. But anyway, uh, my question is, um, you know, your uh, your lecture regarding kind of identity and yeah. what what kind of defines and topics you you uh, contextualize it. And it being missing What do you think about um, uh, Pentecostal theologians who are using, who are, who are kind of coming from a pneumatological focus to make uh, Christianity more open to other religions that blur the line of inclusivism and pluralism? Um, uh, case in point on pneumatological theology of religions. From my perspective, it seems as though lay or more pastoral ministry uh, 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 focused and costly are, are focused on, are, uh, uh, will adhere to the exclusivity of Christ. Definitely. And yeah, uh, what, what, how, you're a missionary and you're an academic. Oh yeah, so, well you're, you're touching on a subject that's very close to my heart. Now, and let me say this, I, I can't say that I understand entirely all, all the discussion or I'm up to date with the discussion and, and I don't want to um, focus on any names or, or in particular uh, because I, I'm not sure I don't want to put words in the mouth of people but to the extent that we seek to draw um, build bridges I put the way, with other religions by by focusing on the spirit as opposed to Christ I see a, 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 a fundamental contradiction there, and that is simply this, that in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is, is always exalting Jesus, is always about uh, bringing people to Christ. And it, you cannot separate, in fact, uh, you know, you know Paul, uh, Paul very closely identifies the work of the Christ, the work of Christ with the work of the Spirit. That is, the Spirit makes real to us that which Christ has provided. And so, uh, I would say that you cannot separate the two. And that when we're talking about the Holy Spirit of the New Testament, we're always talking about the Spirit that affirms and, and, and glorifies Christ. So I'm uncomfortable with that. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Since this lecture is about the possible identity, uh, I'm wondering what you think of uh, some of the writings that we're reading from Pentecostal scholars that went through SPS and other organizations that have broadened the definition of Pentecostalism from uh, spirit of baptism to more of uh, self identifying as a Pentecostal. So it seems like there's a uh, distinction yes. now between the classical Pentecostal right, very much so. definition of what Pentecostal was based on experiencing spirit baptism yeah. as opposed to now just self-identifying as a Pentecostal. So what what are the ramifications of that, say, in your village yeah. in China or around the world as you travel? Yeah. Well, let, let me say this. I think you're asking the question uh, you're really asking the question about the definition of what, what does it mean to be Pentecostal. And one of the reasons why I wrote the book, Pentecost, This Story is Our Story, is because I saw that there was a reluctance on the part of many uh, in the academic community to clearly define what it means to be Pentecostal. There was a, a reluctance to do that, and that there were many outside of the Pentecostal community that were actually speaking for us. And that frustrated me. I, I felt like, hey, you know, these are the non-Pentecostals are telling us what you know what it should, what we should be like and what what it means to be a Pentecostal. And I thought, that, no, uh, I, I want to, uh, you know, I'm a Pentecostal. I want to be a part of this discussion. So it was partly out of that frustration that I wrote the book, but also it was out of a sense of frustration that in, in the academic community there's an unwillingness to define very clearly what we mean. And uh, I think 
there are different there are different approaches to this. One approach would be represented by Alan Anderson. And if you look at the definitions he gives, they're, they're so incredibly broad that to me it's meaningless. To me, if a word or a definition means everything, it means nothing. And also, I feel that uh, there, at the same time, there's great, uh, I think there's, there's great uh, unity, there's great agreement concerning the core values of the modern Pentecostal movement. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to ask, I, I'd like to get responses to this because I'm very interested in, in how you react to the, the three convictions that I'm talking about. But those three convictions flow both historically from the modern Pentecostal movement and they flow, I'm suggesting, biblically from our reading of Luke Acts. See, this is why I'm saying that Pentecostals are making a significant theological contribution to the larger church. The, the, the movement has made a significant contribution. And that is reaffirming the role of Luke Acts in the canon of Scripture. Now, as I mentioned earlier this afternoon, Protestant theology has tended to be Pauline theology. And we love Paul. I tell you what, if we didn't have Paul, we would be impoverished. But, but uh, in his wisdom, the Holy Spirit has also given us Luke Acts. And because Paul is writing to churches, the focus of Paul's theology tends to be more inward, more internal. That's why we desperately need to hear Luke Acts, because he gives us this important missional, this important outward dimension of the work of the Spirit. This, this is what I've tried to highlight this evening, is that the work of the Holy Spirit, as described in Luke Acts, it's missional, it's missiological in character. We desperately need to hear that. Now, in terms of definitions, you know, my father, who's a historian, he, he would say this. A lot of people say, well, there are a lot of spirit movements, both prior and around uh, uh, Azusa Street and all of that. And it's true that there were, and there were many. You know, there were, there were revivals both prior, uh, that is spirit revivals and, and re revival that. But the thing that marked and that gave uniqueness to Topeka, to Azusa Street, and, and beyond, is that there was a clear message. There was a clear message. There was a clear, uh, it's, only, it's only at Topeka and it's only at Azusa Street is there a clear connection between baptism and the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Only at the, and, and that has marked the Pentecostal movement. And so I'm convinced, yes, there were many wonderful spirit movements, but they didn't have a, a clear message or focused message. And this was uh, the, the uniqueness of Azusa Street. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask this question? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, kind of piggybacking on that, yeah. <clears throat> on Dr. Kelly's question and others, it seems to me that reading some of my colleagues' work um, that Azusa Street and the early Pentecostal movement was less modern and more, more paramodern, if you will. In other words, we had somehow escaped what was happening in that moment. Um, it seems like somewhere a couple of decades later, we went backwards into the modern movement. I, I asked a question oh, yeah. earlier today about the, why, why use the terminology uh, evidence instead of signs. Science being the more biblical uh, word and evidence being the word seeming to infer a question that the modern world would ask. With that, it seems like we've lost a lot of our apostolic ethos. We've traded that in for evangelical respectability. And so my question is, in a world where we're seeing a disconnect, at least in the research I'm, I'm reading from Paloma and others, and the fact that we hold tightly to the doctrine but we're practicing it less and less in our local churches. As someone who lives in the East and the world schizophrenic, I think you called it earlier today, <laughs> what would your advice be to us Pentecostal pastors, practical, tangible ways to reunite okay, this, this uh, prophetic speech language right, with, with this and move forward into the future? Yeah. I hope that makes wow, sense. Wow. Thank you. 
that also. <laughs>